Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, from a very rainy Singapore, something I'm sure that uh, Australian wheat farmers would love right now. This is the weekly Precious Metals and Commodities uh, Weekly Outlook. Uh, my name's Jeff Alley, uh, based here at Oanda, Singapore, and I'm a senior market analyst, amongst other things. Welcome once again. Uh, it's been uh, an interesting uh, start to the week. Most of the action has been geopolitical. Uh, as we saw last week, the uh, Fed said that they were staying on track uh, for a series of rate hikes and started quantitative uh, tightening, so they call it. Um, this has led to some reassessment of the US uh, interest rate outlook, and we've seen bond yields firming uh, in the United States. This has led to a, a generally uh, gentler but stronger uh, US dollar. Over the weekend, we saw indeterminate elections in both uh, New Zealand and Germany. I said New Zealand first because, of course, I am a Kiwi. Uh, particularly with uh, the German election, uh, this has put uh, a bit of downward pressure on the euro and again led to a bit of uh, dollar strength. But what we have seen uh, since the start of the week is uh, uh, rhetoric uh, from uh, North Korea to, um, saying that uh, the US has effectively declared war on them, uh, which of course the US has denied. We've also seen a lot of noise out of Iran and uh, most particularly, and I think is um, the most important thing to start this week, the Kurdish... Uh, Kurdish autonomous uh, territory in uh, northern Iraq having a, uh, an independence referendum which they will almost certainly uh, win. Uh, this has led to uh, quite a lot of noise in that part of the region as if they didn't need any more noise and instability uh, with both Turkey and Iraq so far saying they will uh, block uh, any uh, oil uh, exports from, uh, from uh, what would effectively be a Kurdish uh, Republic. Uh, should they vote for that. So uh, that situation is an evolving situation and uh, will no doubt uh, turn into a bit more of a mess as we go forward into the week. Its effect is, uh, if we look at the first chart here, being most noticeable on gold. If we look on the right hand side here where I'm circling with a cursor, we can see gold jumped uh, $20 uh, uh, from, um, from low to high uh, overnight. Um, and uh, today has been consolidating that bounce uh, nicely. We had seen uh, gold come under pressure from uh, higher rates and a stronger US dollar to end the week. Also, from ex some extended long positioning, we did break through this breakout level. But what I have been looking at is what I like to call the retracement box. And this uh, Fibonacci pattern that I've drawn here, if we move over to the left, we can see I, I quite like, uh, from a longer term perspective, uh, when moves retrace into this 38.2 to 50% box. In this case, it was 1281 to 1299-ish. And as we can see here, once we've broken this long-term support line, we've held the retrace, um, and then we've done some work around the breakout level at 1296. But we have based, actually, inside this box. Uh, it's almost a textbook uh, technical uh, feature. Uh, and then, of course, we've moved up. Now, that has been driven by geopolitical headlines, of course. Uh, so we'll have to see what the longevity is. The next uh, level, of course, will be, if I can just pop this cursor up here. The next level will be around uh, this uh, breakout line, which will be around uh, 1321. Uh, so we can see here, uh, we're based in the 38 to 50% retracement region, uh, and then moved higher uh, to uh, around uh, 1308 today, but high as 1313. The next level will be around this... Uh, previous uh, previous uh, low high and, and this um, this uh, long-term uptrend line. So we're talking around 1320. On the downside, of course, uh, around this uh, 13, sort of 88, 87 level will be the uh, first uh, important support uh, that gold will meet, then the 50% retracement, and then we start looking at the 100-day uh, the, uh, moving average way down here. It's uh, 1370, but for now we've done a, a textbook hold in the middle of this uh, retracement box and uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how this evolves. If we pop over to silver, again it's a similar sort of setup. If we look over to the left here where I'm circling the 38.2, which is at 1696.5 and a half ish, and then uh, the 50%, 1657.70 on my chart. We can see that silver 
has broken again out of its longer term support line here uh, last week or at the end of uh, the previous Friday. Uh, consolidated above the blue line, the 200 day moving average, and then dropped down to the 100 day moving average. A couple of things to look at here. A, we have based yet again in this 38.2, 50% Fibonacci box. Uh, but also the 100 day moving average has actually managed to hold uh, three days worth of successive uh, tests. So this 100 day moving average uh, from a technical perspective um, around uh, the 1689 level, 1690 level uh, becomes a fairly uh, significant pivotal area. Uh, we could also probably uh, look at this almost double bottom here at 1682.70. Um, I haven't drawn that line on. Let's uh, pop that line in there. Red base twice. Uh, so that uh, these two areas uh, become uh, sort of important um, important short term support. On the top side, to be honest, it does have a lot more work to do. Uh, we need to uh, recapture the 17.4 uh, region, and then of course uh, this uh, longer term uh, uh, resistance and then support a pivot line around 17.76 is also where that long term uh, previous support line was. So. Um, it does have a lot of wood to chop silver, um, so I'm not uh, quite as confident on this as I am on, uh, on gold. Let's have a look at platinum. Again, uh, a lot less constructive, the charts. I've taken off the Fibonacci in this case because it has actually broken uh, the 50% retracement and even down through the 61.8, which sort of invalidates the whole thing. Uh, again, some things going on in platinum. There are structural um, surpluses above the ground of platinum all the way out to 2020 and I think that is definitely weighing on uh, the, uh, the silver metal so to speak uh, although when uh, my engagement ring was made and my wife's uh, engagement ring uh, they were made of platinum and I didn't notice it uh, being uh, particularly cheaper than gold but I guess that's life isn't it um, I call it an investment in the future now, the, the first uh, resistance here is around the uh, 946.25 uh, region, uh, which is this double top from uh, the 22nd and uh, the 26th. Then we have the 100 day moving average. And now, I mean, platinum has broken through both the 200 and 100 day moving averages, and its fall has been fairly precipitous. Part of this would also be due to uh, liquidity. Uh, we can see the 100 day moving average will be the first, another resistance level 948.70 and then we need to chop through this uh, 957 the 200 day to really uh, start thinking that maybe the worst is over uh, for platinum. Uh, key support is clearly this uh, low here on the 25th uh, around 925.90 call it 926. Just keep an eye on this RSI though because uh, people dismiss RSIs but uh, they tend to be right over a multi-day period and we did hit a, a very oversold condition down here and sure enough, boom, up we rallied uh, some uh, $20 uh, the next day. So uh, um, they should be respected, these RSIs. Palladium, my favourite precious metal. The one that keeps on giving. And uh, to be honest, uh, the technical picture here is sort of uh, implying a, a corrective uh, pattern still, but we can see that um, the, the actual pullback has been nowhere near the extent of uh, gold, silver or platinum. Uh, palladium itself uh, will be in structural uh, deficit over the next uh, few years uh, and that will, uh, I think that's been playing its part in, um, in, in holding up prices and we, we squeeze up the chart we can just see how strong this uptrend has been and how far away this long term support line is way down here at 841 today. Uh, and we've been nowhere near testing this line or even the 100 day moving average, this red line, uh, in recent times. Uh, we will see some, there's a previous low here and some previous highs around this sort of uh, 900 region. And that'll be a psychological level, that would be the next support. Uh, and then we just have these, um, these pivot lines here, firstly at uh, around the uh, 9, um, the 9, uh, what's that here? The... Uh, 91760 region and then the 941 region but overall the technical picture for uh, palladium uh, still uh, looks quite strong and uh, this looks like a, a retracement in a, uh, in, in a, in a, in a bullish uh, uptrend which uh, probably won't do um, 
um, the, the actual uh, trade uh, any harm whatsoever. And we can see here the, um, the RSI is solidly in uh, uh, neutral territory. Copper. So copper is a bit of a busy chart at the moment, but um, I think overall, uh, if we uh, take these uh, Fibonacci retraces, let me just squash this chart up. I'm not quite sure what's uh, happened here. Actually, uh, you'll have to forgive me. I'll just uh, remove this completely for now. Uh, I'm not quite sure what has happened there. Fibonacci be gone. Ah, there we go. Less of a headache now, apologies for that viewers. Uh, again, a bit like palladium, um, as an industrial metal, it's had a mighty run up in the last, uh, in the last 12 months or so. Uh, China growth story, etc, uh, etc, etc. Et um, and, and you can see that in the strength uh, also of the, uh, of the Australian dollar. When we take a longer series here in copper, we can see just um, how strong that uptrend has been. Uh, since uh, particularly October last year where we rushed higher, we've consolidated and then broken out again. This still looks like a consolidation uh, within a, a bullish uptrend. Uh, clearly uh, on the futures exchanges, etc., spec positioning had probably got a bit of ahead of itself and um, what we're seeing here is actually a pullback within that. Really, this 100 and 200 day moving average here, the, this zone here, 269 to 76.70, 80 area, is uh, the long-term support region and um, the trade itself um, still looks fairly constructive by, um, by looking at the charts here until we see some daily closes below this level. Initial support is at 284.70 uh, and then we have this 290 and a half uh, on the top side in the short term 297 ish followed by of course uh, these highs around the uh, 315 level. Overall though it still looks uh, reasonably constructive uh, from a technical point of view. Natural gas, possibly uh, in all honesty one of the most boring charts you'll see today. Uh, the con long consolidation here uh, continues, um, not really sure what to say too much about that. I mean we've tested the downside and held, tested the upside and, and, and held and we just seem to be pivoting around the, the uh, 100 day moving average at the moment. I think the takeaway from this is that uh, until something's happening nothing's happening and there's no real news to really drive any uh, new, uh, new, new movements in the, in the natural gas market at the moment. All the action is on uh, oil. Uh, so I think uh, for this chart says to me that uh, for the foreseeable we're going to be trading 310-ish, 285-ish uh, with a pivotal support here at uh, 275, 40, 50 region. Uh, no reason that uh, you have to get upset with that. I mean it still makes for good trading if you're a range trader. Um, and, and patient, I might add, uh, between these two, uh, two levels. Brent. Now this is exciting. Uh, we saw Brent, if we look at the top right hand side of the chart, uh, race higher by 4% uh, overnight. What's driven this? Well, a lot of it's geopolitical. Uh, it's uh, North Korea, it's Iran, and most particularly it is the uh, Kurdish uh, independence vote. Um, the Kurds produce, I believe, around 550,000 barrels of oil a day. The Iraqi government has already said that it will stop those exports or exports, and uh, Turkey has already come out, and they've always had a fraught uh, relationship with the Kurds uh, through history. They've actually come out and said themselves that they will block uh, exports from uh, their ports as well. So um, that's taken uh, a bit of a potential production out of the market, which was a bit tight, particularly in Brent, because the futures are in backwardation. Uh, that means that the prompt futures, the short ones, are trading at a lower price than the spot. I uh, won't bore you with the details, but that's actually a structurally bullish um, formation in the, in the futures market. It tells you that people want to buy the oil uh, more urgently in the short end than they do in the longer end. We saw, finally, this box here that I've drawn, this uh, dark blue box, uh, this uh, long-term resistance area around 56 and a half, 57, uh, which has capped all the rallies uh, so far over the last uh, year effectively. This finally got taken out overnight. It had been sort of rising, consolidating, rising, consolidating, and then boom, it's gone higher. A couple of things going on there, as I said, 
obviously what I've just told you about the geopolitical stuff, but also on a break of these levels, we would have seen A, a lot of stock loss driven buying from long-term shorts, and we would have also seen model uh, traders uh, buying the break to go long looking for higher levels. Where do we go from here? Well, clearly the next level will be the psychological 60 level, this magical level that um, OPEC and uh, many other producers would just love to see. However, if we go down to the bottom right hand corner of the chart, we can see that the daily RSI is now at extremely overbought levels. And as I said uh, with platinum before, you need to respect the RSIs. So I think uh, initially we could be in for a period of consolidation up at these levels. Uh, but the market now, given that it is so seriously overbought, from a technical perspective, is perhaps vulnerable to a correction. Now that correction should stop if you're uh, from a technical basis around this 56 and a half, 57 uh, breakout level. Below that, of course, uh, it gets a bit thinner again, uh, and the next support I can see really isn't around till the uh, 55 region. But uh, if the bull trend stays intact. Um, it should really stop around this uh, line here, which I've drawn at 56.80, uh, which is around the series of these multiple tops in this rectangle. If we go over to WTI, so WTI has also risen. It rose by 3% last night following on the coattails of Brent. We've taken out this, uh, this high around uh, late May, early June at around uh, 5160. Uh, we've taken, we've held, we've held this um, blue line here, the 200 day moving average. You'll notice when we shot up, we consolidated above it. I talked about this last week. And this line has actually held all successive pullbacks since then. We have this rather steep support line here now. That's coming in at around this uh, 50.3 breakout level. So those are all consolidating. So this is an important region, this 50.3 down to the 200 day around 49.3. For longer term traders, uh, this region needs to hold uh, for the uh, bull trend to stay intact. Um, the next level above here is a bit like Brent crude. It's its moment of truth as I call it. And this region has held all successive rallies for the last year. And we can see in this uh, gray box, that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 19, 11, I'll, I'll stop counting. You get the picture, yeah? We've um, held this region for um, uh, a, a large amount of time, and this region lies between the, sort of the 53.50 and the 54.70 region. So 53.50, 54.70 is fairly um, impressive uh, resistance uh, from a technical point of view. Um, for, the, uh, for, for, for WTI to, to, to have more legs, uh, we really do need to see a break of this region uh, with a number of daily closes and a consolidation above. Is that going to happen in the short term? Well again, if we go down to the right hand side of the chart, we can see that the RSI is seriously overbought now and it must be respected. So I would say, looking at the charts, that <coughs> excuse me, uh, WTI, like Brent, could be uh, vulnerable either to some short term consolidation around these levels or uh, perhaps a, a bit of a corrective reaction back down to this 50.3. Uh, this will bring uh, the, um, the crude inventory numbers uh, tomorrow into sharp focus. Uh, I'm a bit uh, dubious about the crude inventory numbers though at the moment, simply because they are being distorted by uh, Hurricane Harvey and the supply chain uh, problems that it caused with US refining. So enough of that, let's move over to the softs. And uh, here we are with uh, sugar. Uh, again, uh, sugar seems to be uh, holding up uh, over the last few days, uh, mainly I feel because uh, a lot of Brazilian producers are actually using sugar to produce ethanol since uh, the government slapped a duty on, on imported ethanol uh, and not making it into um, sweet things that we put in our coffees and food and harden our arteries. Could be good for us all in the longer term, I suppose. Uh, but it has been supportive of prices, which has seen us sitting consolidating uh, mid-range between this 0.15 and uh, 12 and a half a pound uh, level. Uh, we can see here that the red line, the 100-day moving average, has pretty much been capping um, the, the the rallies so far. We can see that although it's popped up through, 
The actual amount of daily closes above it have been actually very few, so it's actually held uh, quite nicely. So I think this is actually a short-term pivot level, and a, a couple of daily closes above this, uh, which today is at uh, 14.12, uh, would see a potential for a test back up to this point, uh, point 0.15 level. What we're also seeing is that uh, on the uh, futures exchanges, the commitment of traders uh, report um, has had uh, hedge funds and speculators uh, massively short uh, soft commodities, uh, grains, beans, corn, wheat, etc., etc., for quite a while. Sugar, um, sugar speculative uh, shorts were cut um, dramatically uh, over the last uh, um, 10 days. Let's pop over to beans, soybeans. This one's quite an interesting chart I felt today. Uh, we look at this, uh, this uh, triangle and what's it telling us? It's telling us that soy, soybeans are heading for a breakout. What it's not telling us because it's symmetrical is which way that breakout will come. Uh, given that uh, there's been such a lot of um, structural shorts in the grains market and the beans market on the futures exchanges in the states, you'd probably have to put even money, and given that it's abutting against the top end of the triangle, then it may break out to the top side. We are testing this 200-day uh, moving average at the moment. Uh, whether it has the momentum to do this right now, or whether we're going to have to consolidate more into this pattern closer to the apex, I'm not sure. Looking at this chart, though, I mean, the, the, um, the move should technically be the base of the triangle. Now, I guess it depends where you draw the base of the triangle. You can draw the base of the triangle anywhere you like along here, frankly. Uh, if we took 10.16 uh, down to, say, uh, 9.11, what's that? That's about a dollar. So either way you look at it, it could be set for quite a substantial move. So, uh, I mean, if we're talking a dollar out of here, that's going to take us way up towards uh, the 10.7 level, which would be these previous highs uh, around uh, the early part of 2017. Uh, we can see that uh, if we go over to the middle of the chart, we've had a lot of highs just above this 10.6 uh, area, or on the downside, it could take us all the way down um, into the sort of the, the 8.4 region, which would take us through this long-term support line here at 8.9630. Uh, again, I can't really tell you which way it's going to go, but uh, the technicals are pointing that um, that uh, soybeans are heading for a breakout, and uh, perhaps it is perhaps more vulnerable to a short squeeze given the number of spec shorts out there. <coughs> Excuse me. I get uh, all excited when I talk about beans and it makes me cough. Corn. Another one of my favourite charts at the moment. Uh, let's just squash this bad boy up so that we can uh, get the full picture of it. Again, I think I mentioned last week that we were in a symmetrical triangle again, a bit like the beans. <coughs> and uh, we were getting ready for a breakout. That has duly happened and the breakout has occurred uh, to the top side. Again, there's been a lot of massive shorts on the futures exchange, so perhaps we are seeing a, uh, a, uh, a, 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 um, a, um, a short squeeze. And I will say that out of all the grains, corn has the largest speculative short position, structural short position in the market. If we take the base of the triangle from where this uh, line is intersecting, um, take my word for it, uh, the target is in fact uh, where I've drawn this uh, little red uh, blue arrow. I'll just move this out of the way a bit, um, which is around 3.6. Now that also coincides where the uh, the 100 and the 200 day moving averages are converging. And I think this is quite significant, that given that the 100 and 200 day moving averages are at this point, and that the target now is that point as well, um, this 3.6 region is uh, becoming a very, very significant level indeed. Uh, obviously a move back down through the triangle would invalidate it and we'd have to reassess, but uh, this one looks like a bit of a textbook uh, breakout of a symmetrical triangle right now. It's probably got me the most excited of all the softs this week, frankly. And finally, let's move round to uh, wheat. How the mighty fall, but again, we've had massive uh, short positions uh, in, uh, in, in wheat as well, unsurprisingly, given the ghastly price action and the fall from grace over the last two months. Uh, the uh, record crops in uh, Russia uh, and large uh, production overhangs in the United States have, uh, have uh, seen to that one. But we are seeing life now, as I mentioned last week, we do have droughts in Australia and we do have um, 
heavy rains in Argentina. Neither of those, believe it or not, are, are good for uh, uh, wheat either way. Uh, and it is the southern hemisphere harvesting season uh, at the moment. So there tends to be more of the southern hemisphere uh, wheat uh, for demand at this time of the year. Less wheat to sell equals uh, higher prices. And we've seen, uh, again, uh, the steady uh, retrace. And it is also uh, vulnerable to a short squeeze. Uh, there is still a short position out there of about 134,500 contracts on the uh, CBOT, I think it is. You can correct me if you like. Um, and uh, so it is still vulnerable uh, to a purely speculative short squeeze. The RSI down here on the right is solidly neutral, so we're getting no help there. We have held this uh, long-term support line, this thick line at 3 93.70 a number of times now. We've held it here, we've tested it here, tested it twice here, and way back here. And we can see that when it actually finally broke out of that line, we've never really looked like coming back to it. And this is a beautiful uh, retrace off, off that support line. Clearly this is the key level for wheat. A breakdown through this line would uh, suggest uh, lower levels again, and more misery for wheat farmers. Um, we have just moved up through the 200 day moving average, this blue line. And we've had a couple of successive days uh, closing above it. Next target being, of course, uh, the 100 day moving average around 4.4. Uh, so we'll see how this one develops over the week. Uh, and we'll talk about this next week uh, uh, once we've seen how this price action develops. But uh, right now it's uh, looking uh, like it just could be uh, susceptible to a, a short squeeze. Well, that's it for me uh, for the week. I hope uh, you found this useful. And I'd like to uh, wish you all uh, good luck and uh, good trading out there. Thanks very much for listening in. Cheers.